So no more interest rate cuts this summer. Are you sure? Well, nobody's ever really sure. I guess we'll see what happens, right? Like we're all are already anticipating what's going to happen in July, you know, or if it's not going <clears> to <throat> happen in July, will it happen in September? Right? Yeah. So yeah. The spe we're already speculating, right? Yeah. Amongst realtors, amongst people, friends, neighbors, you know, what's going to happen in the future here? Yeah, hundred percent. Hey, it's BJ and Patrick and we're back talking all things real estate. Hey, take a minute, like the video, subscribe to the channel, helps us out. Let's get right into it. Um, there's a recent report by Deloitte Touche and it uh, basically says this, no more Bank of Canada interest rate cuts until the fall. So we obviously recently had an interest rate cut and uh, so they're doing the summer outlook and they're predicting that there won't be another interest rate cut for the summer. Um, Interesting that they say that because the May inflation numbers are out. Yes. And they're up just slightly. We're right. still under 3%, whatever right. it is, 2.7 to 2.9, what, you know. Yeah. It's all under 3% at this point. But yeah. yes. So their point is, they're saying after three years of economic upheaval, the Canadian economy is beginning to settle down. And so obviously the Bank of Canada doesn't want to upset um the apple cart and we've said this repeatedly that bank of canada said from the start they do not want to undo what they've done all that progress yeah. right with bringing inflation down and keeping and still keeping the economy albeit limping along let's say but moving along somewhat um so and if they rush on reducing the interest rate again as uh and not in line <clears throat> with the federal reserve with the u.s this could affect our dollar value, which yes. it seems like it's going to lessen our dollar value against the yes, Americans. For sure. Already, but not to not to make it any worse. Yeah. It sounds like. Yeah, the, the the goal is always for Canada has always been to follow what the Federal Reserve is doing in the States. So that we can keep some kind of uh, Right, which we're not right can, now. Yeah. But, you know, you have to still do what you do as a country and weigh the value of your dollar versus the interest rates and what that's costing people in your own country. Right. Assuming that the Europeans might be next because, and the Americans would be the last because their economy is actually doing very well. Right. Their stock market's doing very well. Yeah. We're just talking about this off camera, <clears throat> but yeah, we're probably, we're, we're the first of the G sevens to do this right, right. now. So here's uh, what the report continues to say. The Bank of Canada will hold off until September for a second rate cut and then move again in December. Rate cuts are expected to continue throughout 2025 before the overnight rate settle at a neutral level of 2.75% by the end of next year. 2.75? Yeah, that's what that's Can we goal. hold them to this? Well, this is a report. This is This is a prediction. Yeah, you can't hold the government to, to it anyway. No, and of course not. Technically, but. it's not the government, right? The Bank of Canada is supposed to be a separate entity. Yes, wink, wink, right? Yeah. Like, there's no influence at all, ever. Right. So In history, <laughs> in any given time. Um, yeah, right? So, if you believe that, I have a mansion for you in Moose Jaw. Moose Jaw's got mansions? Exactly. Nice. Yeah. So... Um, I guess the point is, and we said this when the interest rate drop was expected and when it was announced, I've said this repeatedly, this is not the silver bullet. We had an interest rate drop, everything's going to be wonderful now, prices are going to adjust, the economy's going to adjust, everything's going to be wonderful. The silver bullet to... Sure. Fixing something? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. To, to fixing There's only the economy, I guess, or the just... The housing issue, the housing market, whichever you want it's to say. There's only one way to fix that, is doing something individually to change your situation to afford whatever the goal is. Well, and for the municipalities to make it easier for builders and developers to build and develop. Have you heard that before? Right? Oh, yeah. They should always get out of the way of business, of, of the free market, I think. Right. You know, I, instead of putting up all these regulations, but... 10 years, $1 million. Oh, we're talking about the Wharf Street project. Yes. Anyway. 10 yeah. years, $1 million, they have not broken ground. 
Right, but the railroad uh, railroad project at least is ten years, and now it's approved. Oh my goodness! And what it cost them? I don't know. Yeah, but it still cost them ten years. Yeah. Uh, so in case you haven't <laughs> missed any of the episodes where I've we've talked about it, and I've really talked about it is if we want to make housing more affordable, we need to make it easier for builders and developers to build and develop. And that's usually a, a, a bylaw issue, that's approvals, that's the whole process of getting all of that done. And if we make it easier, it's going to, you know, you're gonna get the, the carryover, the, the flow down from that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, that makes sense. That well, makes all the sense. That makes far too much sense. Get out of the way of the businesses. Right? I mean, assist where, where you can. And obviously, infrastructure is an issue. We did a, I think we did that whole episode on the infrastructure issues that are coming um, that they're going to need to address as they expand, not just here, but wherever in whatever market that you're, we're talking about. Right. And BC's way of trying to solve this is tax our way into prosperity. Which if we works. tax more, we'll have affordable housing, right? Speculation tax, foreign tax, da da da, whatever, <clears> you know. <throat> <laughs> None of these things yeah. are going to solve affordable housing. Even if we made homes faster, if there if there's not uh, uh, if there's not like incomes, jobs, if we don't have savings, then uh, no one's going to be buying these houses. If no one's buying these houses, we'll have too much supply. They're going to sit on the market until the price is lower, right? So there is going to be a ceiling for prices, and there's also going to be a floor when people start buying them again. Yeah. So it's not going going to be like uh, it's still not a silver bullet. It's just that I think we come from a point of like encouraging uh, <clears throat> expediency and efficiency over uh, bureaucratic regulation and taxation, uh, which are passed on to to the end user and that ultimately will um, help help the end user buying this home. Sure. Or multiple homes. Yeah. So I would agree with what we've seen here that we're probably not going to see another interest rate drop for the summer. And that their projection, it makes sense to me that they'll they'll wait till September and see what's happening. Yeah. Again, inflation numbers, what's the economy look like, how's GDP and then based on those things, they'll make their next decision. But if it's two drops, then you have one in September and then one in December. I wonder if they're going to spread it out just because I don't think the Federal Reserve will lower the interest rate till the end of the year. So if we do another rate cut, let's say September, anytime before the end of the year, we start to have that further gap from the American interest rate and our interest rate. And then how much that affects our dollar. And then how much does that affect our imports? And then we go back to having right. an inflation problem. I don't mind because I still get checks from the U.S. So. Okay. Not cheese. Not cheese in sign language. Make it rain in rap videos. Is that what it is? I don't know. They, make it, they go like this. Make it rain. Okay. But cheese, like it's like this in sign language. I didn't know that. Look at that. You learned something new. Not only do we talk about real estate, we give you educational value. I could be totally wrong. This is just what I remember when the kids were like that young. Yeah. And like I remember non verbal yeah, still. Re and they were like Oh, I remember Remory learning. Was like learning. More? Yeah. Remory learned sign language. At I one still point. use this one. Okay. Yeah. To the cat. <laughs> I'm trying to cat teach a cat sign language. It's not working. Yeah, I'm sure. It just knows if I have treats or not. <clears throat> okay. So um, that, that's it for what is essentially in this report. And I would agree with what we've, uh, what we're seeing here is that we're not probably going to see anything else happen over the summer in terms of the interest rates and we'll see something in September. And then again, at the end of the year, Hey, but don't wait forever for like the interest rates to change. You know, you got to take action. If you want to get into the market, you've got to, you've got to do something about that. You know, there's different ways or different ways. There's certain qualifications you need for financing. And, um, and you can work on certain ones if it's your budget for a down payment, if it's your credit, if it sucks, you know, talk to somebody at the bank, mortgage broker, tell you more about credit. Um, and then there's your, your income. If there's a way to I increase your income, uh, retraining, getting a promotion, any one of those things, then obviously it's, it, 
manipulates the numbers to what you can afford and getting on the property ladder. But yeah. if you're uh, reselling, you know, this might be a really good opportunity. It, it's going to take a lot more patience than what we're used to in most recent markets for selling your home. It's going to take more time um, and more negotiation uh, to getting the, getting the property sold. But at the same time, you are that buyer. Once your home is sold, you can negotiate a little bit more aggressively um, and, and, and have more opportunities. Sure. You know, we're starting to have more listings. It's not flooded by any means. I think this is higher than our uh, previous 10 year average now in Victoria. So it's probably similar or somewhat similar across Canada now uh, based on what's happening with interest rates and buyer sentiment. Hey, thanks for joining us today. I uh, hope you it got some good information out of that. Please take a minute and like and subscribe. Uh, it helps us out with getting the word out there. If you know anybody who you think needs to see what we're talking about, please let them know about it. And of course, if you're thinking of buying or selling real estate in the Greater Victoria area or anywhere on Southern Vancouver Island, you can get a hold of us. Our information is in the description below and we'd be happy to help you. Thank you so much for watching and we'll catch you in the next video. See ya.